Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Today I'm going to try to fix this old VCR that I have. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So I know it's been a long time since I've done a Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, but I haven't really had the time to get round to it. But I'm gonna give you the rundown on what's going on in here. This is an old Ferguson Video Star. Uh, can't find the number anywhere. Well. It's a VCR and it has a little bit of a problem. Now I had this set up in my room some time ago and I had the clock set so I could see what the time was. And one day I looked at the thing to see what the time was and there was absolutely nothing on the display. So I thought, you know, maybe the plug had come out or something and that was all fine. But when I looked inside, I saw that the, one of the fuses here had blown. I don't know when it blew or why it blew, most people would just try to fix that fuse and then plug it back in, but that's not really the way to solve that kind of problem because whatever blew the fuse in the first place is probably still there. So I'm going to take this thing completely apart, find out what caused the fuse to blow, and fix that, replace the fuse, and it should be absolutely fine. Okay, what you're now looking at is the power supply, and I foolishly took out the fuse that's blown a lot when it first blew, so I have absolutely no idea what's supposed to go in there. This one says T800 milliamps, so I'd imagine an 800 milliamp fuse also goes in there because... Oh no, wait. It is labelled. I don't know if you can see that, but it says 2A, T2A there, so that's a 2 amp fuse that's got to go in there. So if a 2 amp fuse blew, there must have been something that caused a really big short out. So the problem is a little bit more serious than I first thought. Now, firstly, I'm going to test that it's not the power supply itself that's gone wrong. So the first thing I'm going to do is test all the electrolytic capacitors for short outs. There's, I think there's about six capacitors. I've got three here. Don't know, am I seeing that? Showing that in the camera? Yep. So there's three here, there's one there, and there's three here. So that's seven capacitors. And I'm going to test those for shorts. So to do that, turn it around so we've got the circuit board facing us. And with my clapped out meter, I'm going to test the capacitors. I'm just going to put the leads across each capacitor and check for a short circuit. Let's see. That one's alright. The meter should beep for a little while while it, while it charges up the capacitor. But if it beeps constantly when the capacitor's connected, then there's a problem. Let's see, how good is this one? Okay, that one appears to be good, no short out. Now, oh, I'm going to test the other capacitors now. Well, that's all the capacitors tested, and they've all tested good. I've also tested that they still have capacitance, and the way to do that is check that the meter beeps when you put the leads across the capacitor, then reverse the leads and check that the meter beeps again. Now, I'm just going to put the microphone right next to the meter so you can hear it. I hope you can still hear me. Now, I'll just put the leads across one of the capacitors here. I'll put it across this one. And you can hear the meter beeps for a little while, then stops. Now I'll do it the other way. So, if the meter beeps for a short while while you test the capacitor, that means the capacitor's absolutely fine. But if the meter beeps continuously when you test the capacitor or doesn't beep at all, then there is something wrong with that capacitor and it needs to be replaced. But in this test, all the capacitors seem to be fine. Now I'm just going to check the transformer, check that the primary coil hasn't gone open, so I'll put this onto ohms when I can find it. 
Right, I'll put it onto the 2 kilo ohm setting and I'll test the primary winding, which is along here. We have 72 ohms. Now I'll just test all these secondary windings. I'll put that onto the 200 ohm range. Okay, we've got 0.9 ohms there. 1 ohm there. 18 ohms there. And almost 2 ohms there. So each of the secondary windings on the transform is fine. It's easy to find the secondary windings because if we have a look at if we if we have a close up look at the circuit board, you can see they are marked there so I know which one is. Okay, so I've now replaced the fuse and I'm about to test the power supply. I've put some thick tape over the parts that are going to have the AC power going through them because I don't want to electrocute myself. Now I'm just going to plug this in and take some voltage readings. Right, that is now plugged in. Let's turn the meter on and take the voltage readings. I'm just going to read across all these bits, these output bits. Okay. 21 volts. Eleven volts. Now I'm just going to test all of those and check that they are working. And I'll be back. Well that concludes the test of the power supply. It seems to be working absolutely fine. I've tested all the outputs along here. And some of them, for some reason, are still AC. But that's normal because those ones are connected directly to the transformer. But some of these outputs are as high as 53 volts when I tested them with the meter. But they're connected to capacitors that have a much higher voltage rating, so obviously that's the sort of voltage they're supposed to give out. So I think that says that the power supply is absolutely fine and there's nothing wrong with it. So now I've got to move on and try to find out what's wrong elsewhere. So the problem must be in here somewhere. I have absolutely no idea where that is, but that's where we're going next.